I can't yeah. remember who the player was, but they I think it was Lahiru Kumara. It was Lahiru Kumara, yeah. Yeah. Fitness, yeah. Not meeting fitness standards and whatnot. Just uh, yeah, they were the, throwing people under the bus. You can <laughs> see you've got your big smile on, and I was <laughs> waiting for that because um, not a bad prediction when you said they'll make a flat wicket out there and turn into a draw. So yeah. good call on that. He's done as Cody Boland for Sri Lanka. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Sri Lankan Cricket Podcast. My name is Vida and I'm with my co-host Sohan. How are you doing, Bara? Doing good, Vida. Life's kicking off. Keen to be here recording one more episode. Back end of the IPL. Let's like to, I think we've got a small um, tight, tight game today to qualify between um, your team, RCB and my team, De- uh, Delhi. Uh, we'll touch base through the program on that. But mm. free, I mean, Sri Lanka is busy with their cricket schedule, so we'll got a few things to cover in this episode yeah um, i'm keen to uh, find out who's gonna get through to the mm-hmm. playoffs uh, rcb i'm backing rcb you know that uh, it'll be an interesting game tonight before we get into this episode uh, we want to announce we have a new sponsor for the podcast uh, so this episode is sponsored by our new sponsor stack sports australia Stack Sports Australia uh, supplies top quality hand-picked cricket equipment at best price. And if you shop with them at their Preston showroom or use their online shop, use the promo code SLCP10D and you'll get a 10% discount on all your purchases. We'll add a link in our show notes to their uh, online shop. So if you visit their showroom, tell them that we will send you and uh, they'll give you a 10% discount. Let's get into the episode. Um, let's start with the Bangladesh versus Sri Lanka first test match for us. The test match ended it in a draw. And uh, as I predicted... Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> you can see you've got your big smile on and I was <laughs> waiting for that because um, not a bad prediction when you said they'll make a flat wicket out there and turn into a draw. So... Yeah. Good call on that. And yeah, I think Sri Lanka, good result. I think nothing, uh, it's a draw. And not. Uh, I don't think uh, we've got any disappointments with the setup there, with what was on offer. Heading into the last game, uh, you know, a lot more to achieve. Yeah. Um, but I think re- for us to review the test match, I think things went, nothing, nothing wrong because the pitch was pretty... Pretty bare, isn't it? Flat, and um, I didn't see much in it. So, draw was the result. No, nah, it was a it was a very flat wicket. I mean, we did well to get to a good score, but uh, thanks to Angelo Matthews, who scored. Yeah. Unfortunately, he got out for hundred ninety nine. He missed out <laughs> on a double hundred. Um, he scored more than half of our runs. So it was a it was a marathon innings by Angie. So we ended up making three ninety seven, <laughs> thanks to him. Uh, yeah, and Bangladesh met four sixty five all out. Then Sri Lanka batted again. We were in a spot of bother early on. We lost a couple of wickets. Yeah, we were two down for thirty nine. Then you know we ended up scoring two hundred two hundred sixty for six, and that was the end of the test match. So. Lots of hard work for the spinners. Ramesh Mendis, you know, we we'll, we were looking forward for him to come back to the side. <laughs> he went wicket less, bowling forty five overs, and will yeah. then bowl forty seven overs and took only one wicket. But the yeah. highlight was Kasun Rajit, uh, who came in as a concussion sub, and uh, we ended up taking four wickets. So maybe the way to go with our fast bowlers is just don't tell them you're playing. Uh, maybe tell them in the morning, you know, you're up and you're playing. <laughs> that's the best way to get the best yeah. out of them. Now that's true. I guess a good way, I think, touching base, I'd, I'd like to review the batting setup with her. I think yeah. uh, there are a few things we've picked up uh, watching the game from here as well. Some tactical changes and also... Um, even things we spotted with our batting group. At the start of the series, I tweeted that the Moot's going to score 220 runs. So yeah. um, just to give an update, he needs to score 159 or around that mark. Yeah, 159. I just did a quick cal. 
during the series go um he if he gets up to 150 sri lanka is going to win that test match so that's mm. a that's a result we'd want to bank on but touching base with dimuth i'd like to something i noticed uh, the bangladeshi bowlers were bowling into his body a lot um, mm. and packing the field so they are playing on his strength as well as trying to use that as an option to get a wicket so um it could be a bit of the sri lankan influence of rangan herat in the coaching setup as well but uh, um the left arm spinners were bowling more at an angle into his body so mm. he works the ball on the leg side and he tends to play it a bit upish so mm-hmm. um i saw that as a big tactical change that the bangladeshi players got on top of it mm. um for dimuth i think he'll need i need to work out a plan now to come out of that situation mm. um but i think anji a timely knock for him 199 i think he joins sanat as well for a 199 yeah. club getting up to 199 is a massive effort in itself um so uh he looks good he looks like he's taking time uh, rather than going hard at the ball um and kusal mendis i think come regularly turning back to the team has a lot to prove from i think yeah. uh, putting things into the past and trying to move on forward by you know catching up with cricket and doing the right thing out there in the middle so mm-hmm. um he's looking good um so nothing massively errors that we see it's the same way we've played as well i don't see a massive difference from a like like i think you said chris sulod is probably taking a back seat understanding how the boys want to play their cricket maybe yeah. that's what's happening yeah i mean bangladesh is not what they used to be but I, it's not a team you can just run over like we used to do over the years so yeah. you're right like Angie Sinnings was you know basically without him making that 199 we would have been in trouble yeah we better time um we better 153 overs in the first inning so yeah. that's, that's nearly two days of batting so that's yeah you know, that, that's a good difference yeah absolutely like in the end that wasn't enough because bangladesh got up to 460 65 so angie's 199 but fisher fernando stayed with him for i think nearly um he batted 84 balls yeah. for 17 and uh, yeah he was more disappointed than angie when angie got out yeah uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i saw the boys eat up a few balls like even asit fernando scored played out about 20 or 27 balls yeah so. yeah no that was that was a great effort um naim hasan took six wickets the over spinner yeah other than that sakib i mean bangladesh batting two season campaigners for bangladesh scored hundreds uh tamim yeah. and mushfiker yeah um, those those Sakib guys are hitting very good rec- record against us he he scores yeah, that's what i was going to say against us Both um, of those guys seem to be score they love sri lanka and we kind of have a headache of having them on um mm-hmm. uh, both of them were competing to get up to 5000 test runs so be the first guy to get there um shikhar yeah shakib hasan has probably dropped a bit of his batting skills or his skill set as a player test player at the moment he, he does he does look a bit out of sort even in the field sometimes when you see in the field when he throws from the outfield it's um i don't know it doesn't sit sit well um mm. i've seen him as a player it just seems to be a bit uh, disjointed in that setup but um mushviku tamim even now litan das seem to be able to find his own i know there's a lot of memes to everything going online but <laughs> he's scoring runs now um mominul Uh, the captain will come good is a quality batter as well mm. um, so it's not a easy way for sri lanka they've got these batters like we got two players who are, i mean mushfiku got to 5000 tammy tammy muske will get to 5000 um and then even sakib alasun he's probably be around the 3 to 4000 mark so um couple that with a few good batters um they look a season group especially playing at home i think that's a 
we talked about having that home i guess the strength of playing at home and dominating or keeping that control uh, signs of a good team yeah kuzal mendis had a good game dikwell had a good game as well he ended up scoring 61 not out yeah chandimal got a 50 game. yeah so overall i think you know it's dimut got a 50 in the second innings yeah was well, even spread good record batting in the second innings Anyway, yes. so, so overall, going into the second test, I think both teams um, will be very confident, and uh, there will be a result in the second test. Para, yeah, my prediction is one nil. So, yeah, mm. and Dimut winning the toss—that's a good way for yeah. us, a good chance for us. I think um, depends what we'll do. If it, if we feel it's bad and spinning, I think they'll bring in Praveen Jai Vikram. But uh, yeah. bit of a selection headache now when you when Rajit has come in and snatched some wickets out of nowhere. So he's um, he's done a Scotty Boland for Sri Lanka. Yeah, <laughs> he's done that. So yeah, I don't know whether they leave out Ramesh because maybe Shadow was for um, Dhananjay okay. De Silva. But mm-hmm. I think you'll have to play the Ramesh in the team because the boys haven't played much. Um, I mean, Ramesh had a broken thumb, and then it's yeah. just chasing him off after one game. It's not the ideal setup. You want him yeah. to play. He's a good bat, can hold this. He's a good player. So while he's in the team, gives yeah. us better options. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see what the management decides. Probably yeah. leave, they'll leave it late. Sri Lanka normally leaves announcing the eleven really late into a game in the morning. <laughs> in <Yeah>. the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> It might change, but yeah, wouldn't go there. But um, <laughs> uh, we'll keep an eye out on the scores. But yeah. after this, Sri Lanka, Australia is going to be in Sri Lanka, and yeah. we're slowly seeing the squads being announced. Yes, uh, I mean we got the Sri Lanka A's, um, the uh, Test and the yeah. One Day teams being announced as well. So. That will be a good chance for a few of the boys. I mean, he, there's the development team in England at the moment, so yeah. those boys will be pushing for spots within that group to play mm. um, against Australia. I think we're doing pretty well. The development guys out there with that. I think. Um, yeah, normally our A team tours to England, we don't succeed in England uh, mainly because of our batting, but yeah. this season. This even the county season has been batting friendly. Suranga Lakmal has been bowling more than twenty five overs almost every inning. So you know, batsmen having a very good time in the county season. Sri Lanka Development Eleven playing Sare this week, second day today. Yeah, I was looking at these squads. They were announced play against Australia. Um, they are like provisional squads. They've announced three squads. But test T twenties and one days. Yeah. Uh, interesting to see Banuka Rajapaksa making a comeback. So yeah, I know. As you mentioned, uh, you don't hear fitness in the thinking. media anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no one's talking about cricket these days. You know, there's hardly anything about this. You know, normally when Sri Lanka plays a test match or any game, <laughs> the social media is packed with memes and uh, you know lots of banter, but. Nothing like that because of the situation in the country. Banuka quietly is is made into made into the white ball team. Yeah, one reason why the frustration of players you hear and see, I feel for well, most of them. We we I was or you and I we were both in the same setup. Selectors come and go, um, administration come and go, and unfortunately, players have to feel the brunt of it. You know, suddenly. Mm-hmm. They push in for silly like a certain criteria, and now you can't hear it. I think the direction was good. I mm-hmm. personally think the direction for having that fitness routines and having that going was good. But unless it's happening behind in the media for the fitness setup to happen, which I doubt, they seem to have announced a team without much. Because remember, a few weeks or months ago when they announced a team. They even put it in writing, saying subject to fitness or did did you know? I yeah. can't remember who the player was, but they 
I think it was Lahiru Kumara. It was Lahiru Kumara, yeah. Fitness, yeah. Not meeting fitness standards and whatnot. So just uh, yeah, they were throwing people under the bus. <laughs> bus. The provisional squad uh, team uh, announced us and say he's met his fitness standards and he's now back in the team. He's just this black and white names written down in ink. So yeah. um, maybe they've changed the media uh, person who's releasing these uh, documents to the media. They've Maybe they would have listened to the pod because we did have a chat about to leave all the society, just announce the squad. So, don't know. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> um, uh, one name I forgot to mention was Patum Nisanka. Bro, he's back in, yeah. um, in, in all three spots. So, good to see yeah. him. Back. I think Sri Lanka cricket tried to convince Australia to play the test matches first but i don't think they've agreed to that they want to play day and night games australia said no like they they wanted to play the test ma- sri lanka cricket wanted to play the test matches first yeah but uh, australia said no yeah okay yeah that makes sense isn't it like <laughs> yeah why give an advantage um yeah they know what happened last time they lost 3-0 when they played the test matches first so <laughs> yeah and also could be a could be a gen um to itinerary as well as future yeah. tours planned for australia but uh, yeah the uh, sri lanka will face some challenges in hosting these games mm. travel um hosting day night matches even that could be a big challenge with the current power crisis yeah. i don't think there'll be day night cricket played there i i don't know if they do it mm. um, depends i mean there'll be will sri lanka be able to afford that luxury to host a game on its own you know um yeah we're hearing that there is a massive struggle it it hasn't gotten better no. so um there might be changes that i mean they might have to do to accommodate uh, in line with the crisis we are having yeah now that you've done it now you you mentioned it now i want to talk about it <laughs> you know just to let our listeners know who are from australia and around the world um we have a new prime minister and he's been appointing ministers for his cabinet for the last few days but we still don't have a finance minister bora so you know he's the main <laughs> that's the main that should be the main appointment and because we yeah. need to go to imf and try to convince them to bail us out and without a finance minister <laughs> we can't do that so you know I, i think the more time we take to do things from our side and to get things done um, it's 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 getting harder and harder so yeah right we are going to they're trying to ask for financial assistance through an imf but whoever wants to give money to the country needs to know that there's a proper repayment structure in place yep. they're not going to dish out money and not expect yeah. that never to be returned at the moment ims imf has outlined you know so it kind uh, of restructure your debt and come back Actors. with a solution so that there is some changes being made and yeah. nothing's been announced nothing's been announced from a debt restructuring way not ideal Yeah, I think if we talk about this topic, Bora, we'll be talking a couple of hours. So let's <laughs> let's move back into cricket. Yeah, it's too depressing to talk about the situation in Sri Lanka. So let's. Uh, Sri Lanka women's team is in Pakistan, Bora. They left. To, uh, they left the island. Pakistan uh, has its own challenges as well. With uh, talking about, yes, they have a brand new government and they're struggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. But yeah. Samara is probably leading that team out there as yes. well with that. Yes. With that yeah, she the is. Uh, yeah, Hashan Tilakaratna as the coach. Uh, yeah. yeah, and Sri Lanka women's team hasn't, they haven't toured Pakistan for 17 years. Bro, they're returning after 17 years. So, yeah. Yeah, they're That's playing three one days and three T twenties. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll talk about talk more about it uh, in the next episode. Yeah, there'll be a few games under their belt by when by the time yeah. we for the pod. So, as you mentioned, uh, 
at the start of the podcast, we're a big game tonight for Delhi Capitals. They have to win against Mumbai um, and they have a better run rate. So they have a better net run rate. If they win, they'll go through. If not, RCB, um, who's already got eight eight wins under their belt, they'll go through. So you know who I am backing. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm supporting Mumbai tonight. Yeah, but uh, Ricky Pontin's got this covered against Mumbai oh. Indians. Yeah, straightforward result. Uh, Delhi needs to win uh, to make it to the uh, playoffs. Um, if they lose, RCB through. Um, unfortunately, it's between these two teams. I would have preferred both coming in because I had a slight um, following for RC because of what they've done. But it's um, unfortunately one only one team with her and RCB has to go out for Delhi to come in. So can't have both. <laughs> Delhi do have the setup. They forgot what they need. Um, just got to go out there and perform. Again, a, a team that has been in the making with uh, a strong leader in Ricky Pontin being there. Shane Watson's part of that group. Um, uh, so hopefully they bring home the chocolates. But I think we discussed it about this, about the newer teams doing, having done the right homework in picking up, you know, strategizing and picking up a team. Uh, and all of those the uh, setups have you know successful past players involved in uh, to bring them home like Gautam Gambhir's part of uh, LSG, mm-hmm. um, Gary Kirsten's part of the setup as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've identified I think what they need to, and it's a lot easy when you have a brand new team and a successful uh, leadership group to know what they need to make it happen. They've just gone and picked the players they want straight in. Whereas teams that have been really successful, like your Mumbai Indians, Mumbai, Chennai, Chennai. have given off players that they should have had, and now they're struggling. So yeah, it's a small balance there. Yeah, you learn it the hard way, isn't it, Bora? It's really hard yeah. to in, in in franchise sport. It's really hard to rebuild the team. Yeah. Um, because you know you have that loyalty to the players, and you know you know what they've been they've been doing for the last so many years, and sometimes yeah. you're reluctant to let them go, and uh, that end up being your downfall sometimes. One in the reckon, last... Sorry, yeah. Now I was going to say, do you reckon Mumbai Indians will rest all their players and take it easy, or will they go hard to get a win? I think if they go easy, it'll be obvious, isn't it? So I think they'll pick yeah. their best team. I think Tim David is not available. I think he has returned to Australia for the birth of his uh, okay. child. Yeah. He's been hitting, mm-hmm. hitting massive sixes for us. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wanted him to play from the first game and yeah. don't know why they didn't play him. We might see him in Australia colours uh, in the near future uh, because of his IPL performances. Um, Banindu lost his purple cap to Chahal. Yeah, Chahal took two wickets in the last game and he ended up with 26 wickets. But overall, uh, very good season so far for Banindu, isn't it? Yeah. Look, to be honest, I think I wasn't... I mean. Uh, Indian spinner chances are ending up as the highest with a high high probability of that happening, but a massive uh, performance by Vanidu because um, he had big uh, shoes to fill. I mean, Chahal's the top wicket taker for Royals um, and the leading wicket taker of the comp, so he had to replace that. Plus, he's, he came in with a bit of the all-round ambience as well. So, he's done really well. Um, uh, top performance. Um, he will take a lot back. We've seen some of the tactical as well as technical changes he's made. So, mm-hmm. he'll um, take that back. I think he's gained a lot of respect in the uh, circuit cricket as well as a player where he stands up as one of the top performance in T20 cricket. I think it will open up his um, 
T20 calendar up for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, our bowling attack should look really good in the yeah. months to come. You know, basically our T20 bowling attack is playing in IPL and we found yeah. a new fast bowler in Matisha Patiran as well. So these bowlers will feature in Sri Lanka's T20 team yeah. in, the, in the months to come, years to come. It will be very exciting. Yeah. Exciting times ahead for Sri Lanka. Um, Butler, he's won the orange cap with 629 runs. I mean, no one can catch him. He's, he had a phenomenal uh, yeah. season. Uh, uh, just yeah, uh, Royals. Just, just quietly coming back into Butler's, when you say 600 odd runs, it shows how massive Virat Kohli scored. I think Virat Kohli scored 900 odd runs in a season. So yeah. um, it goes unnoticed. He would have, he would have like how much runs he scored on the back of it. Um, I know he's had a tough year this yeah. year, but shows what a big cricketer he is. Yeah, Kohli is on 309. Um, yeah, at 24. But he's got a good 74 in the last game. So maybe he's peaking at the right time. He'll have a really good final series and win it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Royals um, are doing really well, isn't it, Bora? Sangha. Yeah, got a Boch, bit of a Sri Lankan mix there as well. So um, they made the changes. They're there now. Um, yeah. So just got to make... Um, you know, come together when the, when the tough time games are ahead. They're going to be playing Gujarat Titans or LSG in the knockouts. A uh, um, bit of workout for them. Yeah. They are the most active team among social media. Yeah, yeah. And they seems to be the most relaxed team as well. So they have this really, really relaxed vibe. So maybe they'll go all the way. Um, I think so. Yeah. I think we're coming towards the end of this episode we'll do one q a yeah keen to go for it if you've got a few questions let's go for it yeah so this is from pavan karuna ratna on twitter yeah what do you think of charmika being included in the test squad? other than having played one test in australia there's nothing significant to play him as a bowling all rounder he has 73 wickets in 39 games at 35 in first class cricket and a batting average of 24. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the squads that they announced. Yep. Chamke is in that squad, uh, in the test squad as well. And he's in Bangladesh as well. So he's been traveling with the test squad for the last few months, Bara, even though he didn't get yeah. a chance to play. Hmm. Um, what do you think? He's got a point. Yeah, yeah. He's got a point. I think they've just announced him to be in that preliminary squad. Um, in Sri Lanka and subcontinent, are hard to imagine Charmika holding a spot as a bowling all rounder, especially uh, in Sri Lanka. Just, yeah, mm. but he's probably key, they keep him in the squad because it's a new coach, understanding what the setup is. Because if they, if they travel overseas, um, especially New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, England, um, Charmika will be. Uh, an automatic pick, I think, at this stage from the all round the crop. So, yeah. um, gives Chris Silverwood more time to know his players. Um, might be a reason, or it might be it's a large provisional squad. The Sri Lanka cricket just announced a squad to capture everyone in it. So, um, I won't be surprised if that's the case and he doesn't play. But um, jokes apart, I think it's mainly. Chris Silverwood to have more of a close uh, uh, eye and understanding of all the players around that squad. No, no, I agree with you. Um, I mean, no way he's going to play a test match in in goal. Yeah. So. Not going to happen. No, no, no. So, but with, with COVID, Bora, you know, you tend to have bigger squads. So that makes it easy to have him around in the test squad because you normally you have about 18 to 20 players in a squad now. So, yeah. You know, and that, um, with the concussion being a hot topic, just uh, could be a tactical chance to play all-rounder in that. But 
I'm just yeah. throwing out a straw out of pain just to justify why he should be there. Yeah. He's still young, so we need him around. Yeah, that's about it. It's a weekend here. Bora, any any recommendations? Any movie recommendations? Book recommendations or Netflix? No, not not really. I haven't been following that much. I've been it's election weekend here. So um Australia waiting to see if it'll be a new prime minister, it'll be the um the uh, the current one um you know extending his term. Mm. Uh, but movie wise I haven't been watching a lot um, okay. to be honest um, IPL games on I'll be my eyes will be on the day, daily team making sure the boys um, give them a bit more um, cheering yeah. on hopefully to get them across the line come on Mumbai <laughs> <laughs> nah, what have you been you got any anything lined up to read or watch or um, um i've been watching ozark yeah the on netflix yeah my yeah i guess you and i aren't watching the financial markets these days with what's been happening so <laughs> oh, um, i try not to look at my portfolio yeah. it's flood everywhere so i think this is just the start for uh, things will this is just my opinion i mean i think we are due for a correction so yeah yeah there you go Mm. little bit of finance as well in between <laughs> but, um i think we keep keep in mind of time uh, i think we've covered a lot of topics for today's episode uh, we'll probably catch up with you with everyone next week with another episode um with some of the action sri lanka players have been involved with thanks once again for listening in keep keep the keep supporting us and tune in i think we keep reminding or uh, request where possible to give us some uh, likes on the podcast and gets us up the ratings and a big thank you to the new sponsor uh, stag sports which you can follow them on instagram as well we'll share the footnotes yeah. but uh, it's stag sports australia Yeah, we'll add all those links in our show notes. You can find them. Uh, keep sending your comments and your questions to us uh, on Sri Lankan Cricket Podcast at gmail dot com, or send us a message on any of our social media. Yeah, that's about it. Let's wrap it up here. We'll see you next week. Yes, guys. All right. Bye bye.